Talk about your Lakers, man. Yeah. They are now two and nine. Mm-hmm. Lost to the Clippers by 13 without the quiet one. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Okay, and LeBron got hurt. So LeBron, we don't know if it's a groin or what it is. Or if he just doesn't want to play with these guys. No, no, no. They, I mean, he clearly injured himself last night. I mean, they took him out of the game. And so, yes, listen. LeBron, for the first 16 years of his career, was the most indestructible athlete in the history of basketball. I mean, I, I watched him suffer a high ankle sprain, tighten his shoelaces up. And just go finish. We we he never missed time with injuries, despite playing super high minutes, a super physical style. Then in year seventeen, uh, against the Warriors on Christmas, his first year with the Lakers, he tore his groin. Year, uh, wait, was that? Hold on, this is is this his fifth year? Hold on, this is year twenty. Oh, so I guess it was. I'm sorry, year sixteen, he tore his groin. Year 17, they won the title. He was healthy. Year 18, Solomon Hill somersaulted into his ankle. He was injured all year. Last year, he was mostly healthy until the end of the year. There's year 19. Now it's year 20. He was dealing with a foot injury. Now dealing with a leg injury. This is what happens. He's played the most minutes of any player in the history of the sport, playoffs and regular season combined, or he's second to Kareem on that. He's in year 20. He's the third oldest guy in the whole league, and he's playing these types of minutes. The only guys older than him are Iguodala and Haslam, who Haslam doesn't play at all. And (laughs) right, and Iguodala barely plays. So it's sad, but this is inevitable. That is not the biggest problem with the Lakers. So a couple, so they're playing the Clippers last night, right? The Clippers did not have Kawhi Leonard. Yet the Clippers somehow, despite not having Kawhi Leonard all year long are a competent organization. They didn't have Kawhi Leonard all last year. Won 42 games. They're still a legitimate NBA team without Kawhi Leonard. You know why? This is going in the opposite. Because Lawrence Frank has built out a real NBA roster. You have the stars. They did what the Lakers did. Traded all their assets for Paul George like the Lakers did with LeBron. Now, they didn't win a title. And I... the. I'm not the the Lakers won that title. LeBron was unbelievable. Anthony Davis was great in the bubble. That's fine. But what Rob Blink has done with this Lakers roster post winning the title, it honestly would have been better to spin a god dog wheel. <laughs> it, 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 it was if you were intentionally trying to build the worst basketball teams possible. But you have to have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on the team. You could not do worse than Palinka's done the last two years. Like Deanna mixing up all those. Little, what? Little Deanna mixing up all those ingredients. To like make oh, slime and stuff. Oh, absolutely them. right. So <laughs> the, let me give you another team. Not just the Clippers. Something else interesting happened yesterday. The Milwaukee Bucks played. The Milwaukee Bucks did not have Chris Middleton. They haven't had him all year. In this game, they didn't have Drew Holiday. And Giannis took the night off. No Giannis, no Holiday, no Middleton. They won. They beat the Thunder. I understand Thunder are a bad team. Beat them in overtime. You know why? Because they have legitimate NBA roster. Yeah. They, they have built good. a real team. Yeah. And it is unfathomable to me. So I've had a couple like people come in the messages telling mm-hmm. me, uh, a couple fans of the show, saying that Rajon Rondo has always been like the clear fix for the Lakers. Do you buy into that? No, he's too old at this point. But I do buy into that Anthony Davis's offense has fallen off a cliff. Yeah. It, and they don't have a point guard. He also was saying that he's mad that he's playing. I mean, he didn't say he's mad, but he said that he's uncomfortable playing the five. He is, but but, but fuck up, buddy. Uh, but regardless, that those should be the issues in the margins. The Lakers have done such a horrific job that trading Anthony Davis is now on the board. Yeah. The, the, and I said before the year that their whole plan of, oh, we're going to keep Russ and make it work. When their plan was never to make it work with Russ. The plan was wait and see if a trade better than Turner and Heald comes around for Russ and those picks. And I said on this show and on the TV show, better be careful 
Because with that opening schedule, you could be 2-8 and eight after 10 games, and the season's basically over. Now, it's 11 games. They're 2-9. and nine. In NBA history, teams to start 2-9. and nine. Only, I saw this yesterday. I wish I marked it. Less than 10% have finished above 500. Above 500. Only four have made the playoffs. And only one has won a playoff series. NBA history. Team starting two and nine. So they're totally ruined. They might end up trading Anthony Davis. And now I'm going to give you the one bright side. Okay? I do think. Now the Nets right now are playing well. I When Kyrie comes back, I don't know how sustainable all that is. Okay? I do think. There is at least a conversation if the Lakers call the Nets and say, listen, Katie's unhappy. He wanted out. The Ben Simmons contract is a disaster with three and a half years left on it. You also don't have picks. We will give you Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook's expiring contract plus our two picks in 27 and 29 for Kyrie. No. Oh, KD. For KD and Ben. And then Kyrie walks in the offseason. Russ's contract expires. You have Anthony Davis. You have built back up some of your draft capital. And all of a sudden, you're in New York City with Anthony Davis and max salary cap space. And that's how you're going to rebuild. AD's 29. He's five years younger than KD. You're not winning anything this year. I would. I don't think they would do AD and two picks for Kevin Durant. I don't think the Nets would do that. Okay? I think if you, however, if you gave them a way to get out of Ben Simmons' deal, which is be like, oh, why would they want Russ? Well, Russ is actually coming off the bench playing a little bit better, but that doesn't matter. What you would want is the, the fact that Russ's contract expires. Kyrie's contract is expiring after this year. You would just have Anthony Davis. Yeah, and you, Joe Harris is on a bad deal, but that's the only bad contract you'd have. And you'd have max cap space. Cap's going to go up soon. You're in New York City. You're more you're like, that. that's their path forward. That's the Lakers' only save. And it wouldn't even save this year. By the time that happens, this year's already going to be done. So that's the one silver lining, but I don't trust Rob Belinka to do that. Rob Belinka is and the and Lakers ownership for continuing to empower Palinka because he was Kobe's agent and they have such loyalty there is insane to me. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.